Good morning, y'all. I'm Tracy, and welcome to Just to Get Farms. Today is Monday, and I got a few things done this weekend. I got two more of the potage garden beds uh, prepped and ready for planting. I got some onion bulbs planted. I replanted some asparagus. Last year, for the very first time, I started growing my onions from seed. I've never done that before. I've always grown them either from these bulbs like this, are from starts that you could buy like in bundles at the co-op that's how i've always done my onions and i've always planted them around early spring like around february the end of february well i never got really big beautiful sweet onions i always just got little bulbs um they never fully developed i mean they were good they tasted good we ate them they never stored very well but what i always did was just go ahead and prepare them and chop them up and put them in freezer bags and then whenever i was cooking with them i could just pull them out and throw them in the pan so it worked fine but i never got those big delicious onions like I always wanted like everybody wants really who's growing onions greg at hall's tools told me how to grow really big onions and he said i needed to start them from seed around august and then plant them in november so i went over to hall's university and i learned all about how to grow really big delicious onions i had great success with starting all of my seeds and with transplanting them into the garden in november well we had an arctic blast come through here that we were not expecting and it was really early so it killed pretty much everything that i have all planted i was so excited about it and looking so forward to having delicious fall vegetables but it pretty much wiped out everything that i had planted it took out my cabbages broccoli brussels uh, uh my carrots my beets the onions it killed most of the onions um it just pretty much destroyed my fall garden but what's happening now a lot of those things have come up i've got carrots popping up everywhere i've got turnip greens and rutabagas popping up kales are popping up some of the things that i had planted for the fall that did not make it are popping up now and that is so super exciting i planted 350 onions in november of last year from the seed that i had grown and i would say maybe a fourth of them made it i was at tractor supply the other day and i saw onion bulbs so i picked up a couple of bags of these and i decided i would go ahead and plant them even though they're not going to be the delicious big sweet yummy onions that i was so hoping for at least i will have some onions to put up in the freezer and since i'm growing both this year it'll be a fun comparison to see the difference now champ is just a big old baby and he requires love and attention a lot of you've asked where Clyde is um, how come he's not in the video well Clyde is a great Pyrenees and he is a roamer and he will not stay here he runs to the neighbors he runs all over the place and he will not stay here on the farm we haven't got the whole farm fenced in yet so Clyde is in with the goats. Clyde lives with the goats now. And that was his job anyway. The reason we got Clyde a Great Pyrenees was to protect our goats. Um, we came out one morning and there was a coyote standing over right by the goat pen. That completely freaked me out because I would be so devastated if something like that happened to my goats. So we got Clyde to be a guard dog. He stays in the pen with the male goats and they are good friends. So it's working out okay. It's not the best scenario. We're, our goal for this year is to get our big pasture fenced in for the goats and whatever other animals that we get. And um, Clyde will have a lot more space to roam. We do let him out sometimes to run around and play in the creek and play with Champ. So that's where Clyde is. He's not allowed to just run around the farm with us anymore because he just will not stay with us. He wants to roam. That's the Pyrenees job. That's their instinct is to roam and guard and protect and he wants to roam everywhere. We have to keep both of our dogs locked up because they both want to roam. And we have a neighbor down the road that has horses. And if they get near his horses, it won't be a good thing. So um, we do have to keep them pinned up. Now Champ, I can let him out 
when I'm out here paying attention to him. And if he does go off, he just goes to my very next door neighbor to visit their dog. And when I go get him, he comes and jumps right on the golf cart and comes back with me. Clyde, on the other hand, would just keep running from me and he never would come back. And so for his protection, we really can't just let him roam unless we are full eyes on him. What I'm doing right now, I'm just getting a few of these onion bulbs in the ground. I got, I didn't get that many. I got um, red carmine and I got yellow stuck garter from Tractor Supply. In my raised beds here, I've got a few asparagus popping up. This is my bed with my strawberries and asparagus. Most of them didn't make it. I'm not sure why, but I've got just a few popping up. So I'm about to replant some asparagus. And these are my strawberries. And they are doing pretty good. Got some fruit developing. Oh yeah. These are the carrots that I planted last fall. So they started popping back up. Now these little bitty ones that's in here, like that, these, all these little tiny ones, these are ones that I grew from seed in starter trays. And I transplanted these out here to the raised beds um, about two weeks ago. And these are beets that I started in trays and I transplanted these out too. So this little bed is full of beets and carrots. This is another strawberry and asparagus bed. A few asparagus made it, but most of them did not. And then this bed, a few of these carrots popped back up from the fall, like the bigger ones. But most of the carrots that's in here, these little ones, are ones that I uh, sown in seed in trays and I've transplanted them out. And then these are lettuces. These are the Braveheart lettuce, and these are the Little Jim. So in this bed, I've got lettuce and carrots. I just finished replanting asparagus in my raised beds here. I planted uh, Mary Washington, Jersey Night, and Purple Passion in the first bed here and the third bed and i'm companion planting my strawberries and asparagus together i did a video last year on companion planting strawberries and asparagus and i will put a link to that video somewhere up here and i'll also put it in the video description if you want to go check out that video and i worked quite a bit in the greenhouse just trying to get it organized a little bit it's complete chaos in there um, no rhyme or reason to where things were and a lot of little seedlings needed to be potted up because i'm not quite ready yet to plant them and uh, they're just growing out of the little cell packs. The roots are growing out of the cell packs and stunting their growth. So I needed to transplant and pot them up. in one of my previous greenhouse videos 
asking me, could I not just start seeds in the bigger pots, the bigger four inch pots versus the little bitty cells and then have to transplant them into the four inch pot? Could I not just skip that step and just start them in the four inch containers? Yes, you definitely can do that. But the reason I start and most people start their seeds in the smaller cells is there's many reasons. First of all, those cell trays, some of them are 48, 72 um, little cells. So that's 48, 72 places to plant seed. And sometimes all the seeds don't germinate. So versus having that four inch pot designated for one seed, what if it doesn't germinate? Well, you're just taking up space. Another reason is when I start my little seeds in the seed trays, then I take my tray in the house and I put it on my house germination mat. And that just helps the soil to get to the right temperature to warm up the soil to get that seed to germinate. As soon as that little seedling germinates and starts popping up out of the ground, then I take that tray and I move it over to my grow lights because then at that point it needs light to grow. To get the seed to germinate, it really don't need light, it just needs uh, the soil to be warmed up. But once that seedling pops up, then you need light. And that's typically the case for most of your seeds. Now, some seeds are different and some seeds need light to germinate, but for the most part, they need heat to germinate. And then once they germinate and they start popping up, then they need light. So at that point, I take them and put them under my grow lights until they get pretty established and pretty full. And then it's been warm enough. So then I just bring them out to my greenhouse. Now, since it's been really warm here in Alabama for the past few weeks, I've just been starting my seed in my greenhouse and haven't even been taking it in. And for the most part, they're all germinating really well. Now, my tomatoes and peppers and things like that that do require a lot of heat to germinate and to grow, I did take those into my um, germination mat and my grow lots. But I said all that to say this. In those cell trays, I can have 72 plants on that germination mat and on a grow lot versus in one tray only having 18 four inch pots. So it saves a whole lot of room to start your seeds in the smaller cell trays to begin with. And then after they're at the point that I've moved them to the greenhouse and I can pot them up and I have room in my greenhouse for the bigger four inch size. And some of the plants that I'm growing, I can just transplant them directly from that little cell to the ground. It almost becomes like a little plug. So some of the things I can just directly transplant them into the ground and I don't have to pot them up. But there are some things that do have to be potted up for a couple of different reasons. Number one, because I want them to get more established before I put them in the ground. And number two is because I'm not quite ready to plant them yet and they're outgrowing their little cell and that's going to stunt their growth. So I want to pot them up to a bigger size so they can get more root development and get bigger and stronger before I'm ready to put them in the ground. And that's why I start almost all of my seeds in the little cell trays. And then I'll pot them up to the four inch size pots until I'm ready to put them in the ground. I didn't get to finish doing everything in the greenhouse that needed to be done this weekend. So I'm getting out here this morning. I wanna get that finished, finish up the greenhouse, and then we gotta start preparing for a freeze. We have a freeze warning here in central Alabama for the next two nights. And they're saying it's possibly going to get below 30. So there's quite a few things that we need to do to prepare around here at the farm. My greenhouse is not heated and I have a lot of plants in that greenhouse right now that I am counting on for my garden. So we're going to get a heater out here and around my door, my door kind of is warped and there's a lot of spaces around it. So I've got to hang something over that door just to kind of protect it. There's a few things out here in the protege garden that I have planted already, such as my kales and cabbages and um, carrots and uh, pak choy, kohlrabi, uh, collards, a few things like that. And even though they are cold tolerant, I don't think they're gonna do very well with this freeze because they, they just come out of the greenhouse and they're small, they're baby plants. So I just, I don't think they're gonna do well. So I wanna get those things covered and try to protect those. There's a lot of plants around here that are blooming or that have buds and are about to bloom. 
and this frost is just going to zap those. I'm sure of it. My peach trees are blooming. My ornamental blueberries are blooming. My Peggy Martin rose has a bud on it that's already showing color, and then it's got a million little tiny, tiny buds on it, and oh, I'm so hopeful that it doesn't destroy that. A lot of my roses have buds on them, and I just hope so much that this just does not zap them. So we're just gonna go through and try to protect what we can and save what we can. But my main, main concern is to get the heater to my greenhouse today and make sure everything in my greenhouse survives. So let's go finish up this greenhouse and get everything organized, finish potting up a few things. Um, it's time to fertilize everything in the greenhouse and start protecting everything that we can and getting ready for this freeze. Since I've got the greenhouse all cleaned up and organized, let's take a tour of what all's growing in here. Okay, up here on this shelf, these are all my cool season vegetables that I've still got to get planted. I'm really kind of glad I didn't plant these yet because this would just be more I've got to cover. This is fantail spinach and this is about two weeks apart on the plantings. This is green magic broccoli. These are different cauliflowers. I've got the purple, the flame star, which is the orange and the white here. Here's some Brussels. I didn't do a whole lot of Brussels sprouts. And the real question is, will I even get Brussels sprouts from these before it gets too hot? Probably not, but I'm stubborn and I try every year. Lettuces. 
that I still got to plant. These are marigolds. This is the Kilimanjaro from Baker Creek. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's really pretty, so I'm going to see how that turns out. All of these six trays here of borage. I've got the white borage that my sister-in-law from California sent me the seed. And I've got the blue borage here. And these three trays are different nasturtiums. I've got cherry rose back there. And this is Bloody Mary. And this one is Tip Top Rose. These are beautiful. And these seven trays here, I've got my Queen Lime series of zinnias. I've got the um, blush, the lime, the orange, and the red. I usually direct sow my zinnia seeds every year, and I've always had really good success with that. But last year, I got this same, these same zinnias, the Queen Lime series from Baker Creek. I had a really hard time getting them to germinate and come up. In fact, I didn't even get any last year. So I decided to sow them indoors this year, my Queen Lime series, because I really love these. They're beautiful and I wanna make sure I get them this year. And I'm pretty much having 100% germination rate here indoors. So um, I think that's the way to go with these. Now, all of my other zinnias that where I've collected seed throughout the years, I've got bags and jars of zinnia seeds. I'll just direct sow those because if they come up, great. If they don't, it's not that big of a loss. But these Baker Creek Queen Lime series, I definitely want to make sure I had those this year. I ran out of room in here for all of my plants. So I did not want to put them on the ground down here directly on the soil because that soil splashes up on the leaves. It causes disease and all kinds of issues when you put the plants directly on the ground. So Jean helped me get these pallets and some of the blocks that we're using for bed borders and put in here. And I've just got these on here are kind of temporarily, like whenever I get these in the ground, then I'll move these up here because they're not getting a whole lot of sun down here. But um, I think they're gonna be okay just temporarily. All right, these are my basils. I've got Genovese, cinnamon, and Thai basil here. And you can see I need to be dividing them out and potting them up, but I ran out of potting soil. I'm planning to go to Petals tomorrow and pick up another bale of Berger Pro Mix potting soil that I use. And I'm gonna be meeting my friends, Zach and Jacqueline and Eleanor there. We're gonna do a little plant shopping together and a little filming together. So it's gonna be a fun day. Also down here, I've got my chamomile. Now this is the Zloty Lane from Baker Creek. Um, I've got all of those that need to be potted up. This is a lemon balm here. I just potted it up and divided it out. This one is mandarin. So this is like an orangey scent and flavored. Mandarina is what it's called. This is my catnip and this is from my Hoss Medicinal Herb Seed Collection. These are all different kinds of poppies. That was my little experiment. Those should have already been in the ground. And these two are alyssum, sweet alyssum. And I've got the royal purple and the snow carpet, I believe what it's called, carpet of snow. Um, the roses that I have in here, let's see, I have these two here came from Jason at Cog Hill. He went hunting on the side of the road and, and got these and propagated them and gave me two of them. The one in the back back here is New Dawn. I have two of those. I did have them on my arbor, but I decided I wanted to do something different there. So now they're in pots. This is Lamarne. Now Lamarne, I had this on my garden shed. Let's see if I can show it to you. It's so pretty. Look how beautiful that is. Smells so good. I had her on my garden shed, but she just was not doing good there at all. She was struggling. I hardly never got a bloom. I've had just a handful of blooms on it. So I decided to do something else there. And I've just got her in a pot right now until I can get somewhere for her to grow because she is a climber and she needs something to grow on. And so do the two that Jason gave me 
which we believe is probably a Seven Sisters, and the two new Dawns, and I think that's all. But I have, so I have five climbers and they need a trellis to grow on. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to keep them alive in my pots here until we can get my fence up around my potager garden because I'm going to let those grow up on the fence. And I hope the front fence along the front of the potager garden is going to be able to get done this year. I'm very hopeful for that. I also have a couple of blueberries in here just to add to my blueberry row and I don't know. I got a bunch of different things in here. This is a elephant ear that my friend Connie, one of my sweet followers, gave me this elephant ear and I'm waiting to find the right home for it. This is kind of my nursery area where I'm holding plants until I can get them in the ground or move them outside. Now here's three roses here. This is Duchess de Brabant. Isn't that beautiful? So she's going in the garden real soon. This is a little souvenir of De La Malme Sun because that Arctic blast killed my other one. And this one is spice. I planted spice. Um, that Arctic blast also killed my spice. So I had to get another one of those. Okay, so on this table, I've got some different squashes that are very leggy. Probably gonna have to redo these. This right here is my Moringa. And they're coming up. I'm so happy. I absolutely love this herb. I've got nine of them started here. And it looks like seven of them have come up. But I don't give up because they will come up. So all of these are my different squashes. I've got gentry, red curry, um, the little patty pan sunburst, um, zucchinis. All these are my squashes. Right here are my peppers. I've got some peppers that came up. This is okra. I always direct seed my okra, but I decided to do some starts this year too, just so I could get okra a little bit earlier. So this is jambalaya, this one is Clemson spineless, and this one is jing orange. Right here are all my tomatoes, and they kind of got blasted when I fertilized. Darn, I have to stand these up. I got a whole bunch of different kind of tomatoes here, and I think we'll go through all of those on another day, because there, there's a lot of different ones in here. And you know, I'm really not so concerned about how leggy they are getting because when I transplant these, I'll plant them really deep. So I think they'll be okay. And this is just some ivy that came out of another pot and I'm going to be um, using that in my summer containers. Over here, I've got some different melons, watermelons, cantaloupes. Um, this is my cucumbers. These are my germanders that I propagated. Um, I'm gonna be planting these in the potager this year and I'm gonna be taking more cuttings and I'm gonna continue to do this because the germander here and the little dwarf English boxwood here that I've propagated, I've got plans to make little walls around certain parts in the potager garden. And the germander, which is a lovely herb, and the little dwarf English boxwood makes awesome little structural walls around different things or, or like different areas in your garden. So I've got a lot of those that I wanna create. And that's why I propagated these things just to see how well I could do it. And now I know that I can be successful with it. I'm going to take a lot more cuttings this year and propagate a lot more. Also over here, this is some lavenders. And these are all pretty much the same. This is Hidcoat. And these two here are Grosso. I picked these up at Petals. And I also picked up these Rosemary's at Petals because all of my Rosemary's got killed by the frost that we had. And they were in these four inch size pots like this. And I pottered them up to these bigger ones because I wasn't ready to get them in the ground and I knew they could get a lot bigger if I did that. I was gonna do the lavenders too and I just hadn't had time. 
and now it's about time to get them in the ground. All of these are going to be added to the potage garden, and I'm going to pick up some more lavenders tomorrow. Hopefully, they've got the Spanish in by now. And this right here, these are some of that rosemary that I just took cuttings off of, and I'm going to try to propagate some. And then hidden over here in these two big pots, I've got turmeric. You can see it there and i've got ginger you can see it there wanda at deep south homestead also gave me a couple of tubers of ginger and turmeric so i'm super excited about that i had turmeric a couple of years ago and it just died out so i'm super happy to get that because we do use a lot of turmeric here it's a really really good herb for inflammation and i make something that we call honey medicine here that's turmeric and our honey, black pepper, which activates the uh, the turmeric. Um, what all else do I put in? I put a little cinnamon, clove, ginger. I put a lot of different things like that in there. And Jean takes, usually takes a tablespoon of that every morning. Sometimes I'll put that in some tea. That turmeric's just really good for inflammation and a whole bunch of other things. So I'm excited of the possibility of being able to grow it for us. Also, I wanted to just let you know, if you're interested, that the Hoss Medicinal Herb Seed Collections are both back in stock now. The Premium Collection and the Deluxe Collection. They're both back in stock. They were out of stock for quite a while. They were having some trouble with customs, I think, getting them, getting them in. You still have plenty of time to get those seeds and start growing your herbs so that we can grow our own medicine together. I'm looking forward to an exciting year this year where we're gonna talk a lot about all of these different herbs that are in the collection. And if you're interested and you're wanting to grow your own medicine, you still have time to go over to Hoss and get those seeds and start growing your herbs. I will put a link to Hoss in the description of this video which will take you directly over to Halls where you can order your medicinal herb collection and get those seeds. Also, I want to just take a moment and remind you guys that April the 22nd on a Saturday from 9 to 4, we are having a YouTuber's meet and greet at Petals from the Past in Jemison, Alabama. Um, it is a wonderful weekend. It's a Friday and Saturday event, and it's called Antiques in the Garden that Petals from the Past has done every year. It's a wonderful day of antique vendors set up all in the gardens. The gardens are beautiful at that time, um, and there's, there's food vendors there. And last year, we joined the event and did a YouTuber's meet and greet, and it was wonderful. We got to meet so many of you, and it was just wonderful. So we decided to do it again this year. We did make a change, though, this year. It's just going to be Alabama homesteading and gardening YouTube channels is who's going to be there for the spring event. Now, we are having another event in the fall, and that's going to be open to many different YouTubers, and we've already got 26 invited. So that's going to be a huge event. That's going to be September 9th. But the one I um, want to remind you about today is coming up really soon. It's April the 22nd. So this year, there are 11 of us YouTubers who are going to be there to just to meet and greet all of you who come to see us. We'll be in the same spot as we were last year. And if you've never been before and this is going to be your first time to come, there'll be people at the front and pedals who will tell you where we are. They'll direct you to where we are. But there's going to be 10 of us all set up in the same area where you can come down and meet us and talk to us. And we look so forward to this to get into chat with you guys. I was going to try and name off all of 11 of us who are going to be there, but I know I'll probably end up forgetting somebody. So I'm just going to put up a graphic right here that Jacqueline made for us, and you can see who all will be there this year. Also, if you are planning to come, we ask that you would please go over to petalsfromthepast.com to that website. Go to the events section, scroll down, and you'll see um, the Antiques in the Garden event. And then if you keep on going down, you'll see where it says, Two Palmsteaders Meet and Greet. You'll see where it says that, and there'll be a place that you can click on, and you can go and register, and just let us know you're coming. It's totally free. You do not have to pay to come. We're just asking that you register so that we can make proper accommodations for everybody this year. We hope to see you all on Saturday, April the 22nd from 9 to 4 at Petals from the Past in Jemison, Alabama.
All right, y'all, I got to start getting ready for this freeze that's coming our way. But thank you so much for hanging out with me in the garden this weekend. God bless you, and I will see y'all in the next video.